Hi guys, welcome back. So today I want to go over the recent currency report that the Chinese government released in May for the first quarter of 2021 and highlight some key points so we can find some trends that's hidden and tell us where to invest. And after that, I'm going to do some market updates and update you what I have been doing. OK, now this is a 49 pages report with only black and white font with some charts. It's not very entertaining to be reading. So I'm just going to go over a few key points with you that I think it's quite interesting. First of all, by the end of first quarter 2021, the residential saving has reached 99.2 trillion yuan year over year increase of 13%. And this is just residential because if you consider the others, the domestic saving is 220 trillion. Now, if you only look at this number, maybe it doesn't make much sense to you. But here, someone did a little bit comparison online that by now the residential saving has reached 100 trillion yuan for the first time. And this is only the saving in the bank. So if you also count the stocks, the mutual funds and the money they put in Alipay and WeChat wallet and not considering the real estate, then the total saving should be at 150 trillion yuan. So how much is 100 trillion yuan? It's enough to buy the whole year of Chinese GDP last year in 2020. It's enough to buy two Shanghai city enough to buy half of America and around one and a half Japan. So this is the 100 trillion yuan saving in the bank while the saving interest rate is low. So 100 trillion yuan is about 15 trillion US dollar. Now you may wonder how come such a high saving that the Chinese citizen have and the Shanghai Composite Index, the stock market in China is still so low compared to the US stock market. We have compared this many times in the past. Over the last 10 to 20 years, the S&P 500 has done nothing but mainly going up and recently parabolic move, especially after the pandemic, the QE. But if you compare to the Shanghai Composite Index over the last 10 to 20 years, it has been mostly going sideways with a very slow climbing slope. Why is that? First of all, Chinese people always have a lot of saving. This is from the culture and also some of the historical problems with the welfare system that still has a lot of room to refine, which I have been seeing in the recent years. And with the refinement of the social welfare, it would start to unlock more and more of the saving into consumption. And then this is a different trend we can talk about later. But why Chinese people have so much saving and the Chinese stock market is still flat for so many years? It's because they don't spend much money into the stock market so far. If you compare the percentage of investing in equities between US and China, the percentage of the household investment in equity in US is much, much higher than China. And Chinese people so far have been investing a lot in the real estate in contrast. And that's why we have seen such a big increase over the last 10 to 15 years in the Chinese real estate market. But I think that it's going to change because the real estate market in China had gone up a lot and it really needs some time of consolidation to slow down or go on the sideway. And meanwhile, the smart money would look for other opportunities such as the stock market. And the second reason is also because US has a lot of the 401k, the retirement pension tied to the US stock market. This is why the government would try their best to protect the stock market. And this is not the same for the Chinese stock market. But this is also going to change because in the recent years, we are going to see more and more encouragement by the government to direct household saving into equity funds to ensure a bull market run in stocks. And I don't think it's only last year or this year because I see the Chinese government would 
come up with more and more policies to regulate and encourage people to spend their savings into equities, into Chinese stocks, to boom the Chinese stock market. And once the stock market is up, more and more people would be interested on their own to invest more into the stock market. Analysts said even steering a small portion of China's US 10 trillion, now it's 15 trillion of household saving into the funds would translate into a huge windfall for the stock market. This is the person from the SEC of China saying that the Chinese government had never paid so much attention into the financial markets like today. And this is back one to two years ago before the coronavirus. They had already started to plan this back then. And I think we will see more and more results. And why do they need to do that? I have personally summarized into three reasons. Number one, as described in this article, says why China wants to convert saving into investment. He thinks it's not a temporary policy, but a long-term strategy, which I really can agree. And the reason is because this way, they can reduce the M2 money supply while maintaining the GDP growth. Now you should know by now that the M2 money supply increase and the nominal GDP increase had been a big problem for a lot of Western countries recently, especially. So by converting saving into investment, it would increase liquidity in the financial markets and reduce the pressure of companies' debt and decrease the need of the M2 money supply. So that is the first reason. And the second reason I think is that this can help significantly incubate the new technologies development by encouraging the new startup small companies and help their cash flow and invest more into R&D. In the report recently published, I mentioned, we can see that the domestic investment had increased 25% year over year, while the real estate investment increased 25%, manufacturing investment increased 29.8%. New technology, on the other hand, had an increase of 37.3%. It is 11.7% faster than all the other kinds of investment. Also, high technology manufacturing investment and high technology service investment had increased 41.6% and 28.6%. So out of all the investment increase, the investment in high technology is significantly higher than the other traditional investment. So this is why I see the second biggest reason is because the Chinese government want to encourage more high technology growth, increase the R&D of the country and incubate more high technology companies and startups. And the third reason is because China sees themselves being more and more pressured by the US government that ever since the trade war, they have seen it coming, that the trade war was only a beginning. And now we're seeing technology war and financial war. So it seems like they have been preparing for this, that the US government is trying all kinds of ways to slow down the new technology growth from China. And now by banning all kinds of Chinese investment. So that would be the third reason is to counter the investment ban for the war between China and US. So then they know even with this happening, the Chinese companies would be insured of healthy and sufficient cash flow with the liquidity of the financial market. So then even Biden can actually proceed with this investment ban. It might actually help boost the Chinese and Hong Kong market because more and more popular Chinese stocks would have a secondary listing in the Chinese or Hong Kong market and more saving converting to the stock market would increase the overall index and help the stock of Chinese companies and then attract more international investment funds to flow to Chinese and Hong Kong market. So three reasons why the Chinese government is encouraging with policies to regulate and convert from residential saving into investment into the equity or stock market. Number one reason to reduce the M2 supply, which I see the US government is actually having it out of control right now with not much solution going on. And that has resulted in the volatility of the stock market because a lot of investors are fearful how the Fed is going to deal with this problem. And number two is to incubate 
new technology development in China encourage to help develop a lot of the Chinese companies, new startup, increase R&D into new technology. And number three is to counter the US investment ban. So overall, the fact that the US government is trying so hard to ban the Chinese investment might actually in the end help speed up the growth of Chinese financial market even though it would create some temporary attack but in a longer run it might be the opposite or it just cannot affect the long-term uptrend if we can zoom out step back and look at the bigger picture here back to the highlight of the report the first quarter CPI has remain flat compared to last year. In January and February, it was decreasing 0.3 and 0.2%. In March, increase of 0.4%. Price for pork had six months of continuous decrease. So the food first quarter decrease of 12.5%. So the whole food chain price had decreased 0.2% compared to the last quarter. So we see the risk of inflation does seem much better in China compared to the US. And if this trend can continue to remain the same, I think we should see more and more capital moving to Chinese investment for safety. If this happens, then we know the fear of inflation in US is the real force to drive down the growth stocks or tech stocks recently. But if it's not the case, let's say we don't see the US CPI slowing down and the growth stocks in US keep getting attacked while the Chinese stocks are not rising, while we don't see the money moving to the Chinese stocks, then the whole CPI is just a storyline that the Wall Street put on growth stocks. This is something we need to watch out. In terms of stock market performance, by the end of first quarter, the Shanghai Composite Index had decreased 0.9% year to date. So compared to the end of fourth quarter of last year, but even so, the overall volume, while the S&P 500 had increased 6% year to date by the end of first quarter. So the Shanghai Composite Index had obviously underperformed the S&P 500 for the first quarter. But something interesting to point out is that in terms of volume, it had an increase of 9.9% year over year. And the total fund raised in the first quarter had an increase of 142% year over year. But in comparison, the S&P 500 in the first quarter had much less volume than the first quarter of last year. So in terms of price action, it had increase of 6%, but in terms of volume, it's much less than last year. While the Chinese stocks market had underperformed the S&P 500, but more volume increased compared to last year. So this is quite interesting for me. I think it's an early indicator of the smart money buying the dip in the Chinese stock market. And it might be the beginning of a turning point from the US stock market to the Chinese stock market. Right now, it's still very early to invest in the Chinese stock market. And I think it's mostly the early birds, the smart money beginning to plan their move there. I think this is a massive trend that we cannot miss that's completely hidden, not blown up by the media. And we should definitely not let it go because if this keeps going like this, I think we might be witnessing the beginning of a really long bull run of the Chinese stock market and the early transformation of it. Now, how should we take advantage of it? What would benefit our investment? First of all, right now, there is still a lot of political risk going on, still a lot of fear. But the rise of Chinese stock market would of course benefit the Chinese stocks in an overall scale. But among them, there are also differences. So because of the political risk and the market sentiment towards the listing Chinese stocks in potentially three years, right now, I think the capital would favor the ones that have already secondary listing in Shanghai, Shenzhen or Hong Kong. It's very easy to understand because even though there is more news coming out, more moves from the US saying this and that regulation or threats of the listing Chinese stocks, at least those stocks are already secondary listed in China. So that would act as an insurance to begin with. And the effect of the listing would be much less. Like for example, right now, a lot of the tech giants like Alibaba or Tencent, JD.com and Baidu, 
Bilibili are already second listed in Hong Kong market. And we have seen plans for Neo, Xiaopeng and Li Auto to be secondary listed in Hong Kong as well, perhaps within this year. So that should give us an insurance for potential or further threat. And then second of all, about what sectors to invest in. Other than the new technology area I just mentioned, that seems to be a no-brainer, which we have already invested in quite a bit. Also, we can see in the report last month in April, the Bank of China and the other parties had published the proposal of increasing the bond for green projects to further encourage the environment for green development. So that basically means they want to issue more bonds and spend more money on green energy development than they already had. Because we know China already had the most development so far in terms of green energy, the solar energy. But right now they still want to increase their spending on this. So what would help in terms of investment? For sure, it would help the solar, which we have invested in a stock like, for example, JKS. I know JKS had decreased a lot because a lot of things had happened within this few months. For example, Biden wants to compete with Chinese green energy development, especially solar energy. And also because of the inflation, the material costs had increased and lowered the profit margin for most of the solar energy companies. That's why we have seen a big pullback so far in all the solar energy companies. But recently, JKS had a strong rebound as well. In the last four trading days, it went from the lowest of 28 to the highest of 35.2 on Friday, so increase of near 24%. But it's also because in the past few days, a lot of the solar energy had been growing well. Next, I think more exposure of Chinese stocks and Chinese stock market would open up more popularity and bring more attention to the stocks that were previously less popular and more under the shadow, more under value. As I mentioned in my last video, I gave two examples. For example, ICE, ticker symbol IQ. On Monday when I recommended it, it was 12.6 and then it had a big gap up of 10% the next day and so far had been consolidating. I think this is signs of strength and there's a good chance the stock had bottom and is currently showing reversal already, even though it might come back to backtest the support of the gap. I also mentioned Geely Auto. They're partnering up with Baidu to make EV. Now I recommended it on Tuesday. So far it had been a good run up also. I think it has bottom already and it's quite undervalued for now. And also because it's much less known than a lot of the other EV like Neo, Xpeng and Li Auto. Another one that's been growing quite well and less known is BYD. A lot of international investors invest in Neo, Xpeng and Li Auto and tend to overlook BYD. That still remains the number one top sell position in China. It had bottom on May 11, the Tuesday when I posted the video of potential tech stock bottom and I specifically said that I thought some stocks had bottom already and I think BYD is one of them. From Tuesday to now, it had increased 25% already. So BYD and Jilly is something we cannot overlook, I think. The ticker symbol for Jilly for US is G-E-E-L-Y but it's in OTC market, same with BYD to be BYDDY. If you compare their recent rebound with NEO from the lowest of Tuesday, May 11 to now, it had increased 4% for NEO because right now it's following the movement of Tesla. Li Auto had been increasing quite well. I think it's mainly because of the product launch they're having this upcoming week, giving out quite some expectation. Another one is VIPS. One of my Discord member asked me a few days ago, VIPS just announced a very good Q1 result, I thought, and stock dropped 10%. What is your take? So then I also took a look of VIPS briefly. It was also falling hard because it was one of the stocks traumatized by the article margin call back at the end of March and then just continue selling off with the tech stocks. And on this day, because of the earning, it dropped another 10%. The Q1 result was really not bad. So I think it's mainly driven by short sellers. Right now, the PE ratio is around 15. So it's quite a good deal. It's a much 
less well-known retail or e-commerce platform than JD or PDD, but their sales are still growing and already making profit. So maybe in terms of growth, it's not as crazy as PDD, but in terms of value, it's quite undervalued. So I think we can also give it a try, set a stop loss to be roughly 10% because I think the value is already quite low. So it would be limited room of dropping even though the market continues selling off because the intrinsic value of the company is there to support the share price. And of course, same as Zep, the intrinsic value of the company is quite high compared to the share price, especially if they really had been planning a secondary listing in China or Hong Kong, it would be good news for us. So overall, I think with the trend of Chinese stock market growing, it would benefit a lot of the Chinese stocks that were previously under the shadow with less popularity and undervalue if we compare to their intrinsic value. Meanwhile, some of the popular Chinese stocks in the year of 2020 might continue a period of cooling off or consolidation. This is the short to medium term. But in the long term, I think the overall Chinese markets and Chinese stocks would be doing quite well. And also the last thing to mention would be the stocks for broker such as Futu, ticker symbol F-U-T-U, or another one smaller, that is Tiger, ticker symbol T-I-G-R. These two are similar in the same sector of broker because if the Chinese stock market would keep on rising, it would increase popularity and attract investment from other countries. And that would be a big benefit for a lot of the brokers like Futu and Tiger that can allow investors from other countries to invest in Chinese stocks. And actually vice versa, the growth of broker stocks like this would be an early indicator of a bull run of the Chinese stock market overall. Because if more people buy in the stock like Tiger and Futu, it would mean they are confident of the future growth of the Chinese stock market. But the only problem is that Tiger and Futu both had a super bull run last year with the maximum increase of 847%. So almost 10x already. So in a short to medium term, it might also be in consolidation or cool off if it doesn't come down more. So that is the setback. So you can always wait for signal signs of it to finish the consolidation or the profit ticking before you enter. So for now, something to keep in mind or watch on the side for brokers stocks. Now in the end, a little bit quick update on the market. Like I said two weeks ago, I don't see Nasdaq making a new high anytime soon. So the best case scenario would be for it to move sideways if not going down further. So that is why I told you I would be trimming with the rebound and I gave my price target to trim if it gets to a certain level. I've shared that in the Discord this week. I said this is to give out a price target for me to trim. And for what I have trimmed, I have moved it into Alibaba and Tencent, especially Baba. I treat it as my defensive stocks. While I don't know the stock market would grow or drop tomorrow, so I put it in my defensive stocks. So if it grows, it would more than likely grow with the market. And if the market drops, I can take it out to buy the dip of my other growth stocks that would drop much more. And also I really think Baba has already reached a level to be quite undervalued. So very limited room to drop compared with the room to grow. So for now, I'll just continue to trim at rebound and buy when it dips until the market shows clear sign of reversal. But for now, I will still treat it as a rebound unless it's the stocks that I mentioned just now that I feel comfortable and think it had most likely bottom. Also for now, I suggest you to pay attention to airline. I always plan to buy back the airline before summer, like American airline. I re-enter Mesa to start a position for now, but you also need to be aware that right now, the market is not as friendly to smaller caps. So maybe American airline would be a safer choice. Also Air Canada, because it is the only major airline in Canada that the government would for sure support. So pay attention to airline sector. Now that's it for today. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think about the big trend I just described. Whether you agree with it, have you started to plan anything for that? Or do you have counter opinion? Now, if you have enjoyed this video, please give me a big, big like and write me a great comment. And I will see you in my next video. That's it guys. Hope you can find my videos helpful. 
make sure you subscribe to my channel and give me a big like. Thank you.